The uh, Salion case study is a case study of an organization that has a very different approach to um, software product lines. Salion works in the world of revenue acquisition management, a combination of words that tells me absolutely nothing, <laughs> but apparently it's standard terminology in this domain. Um, Salion was set up as a spin-off from the McKinsey consultancy company to go after the market for organizations that respond to requests for proposal from companies like automotive companies. So automotive companies will put out requests for proposal for things like uh, powertrains or automotive interiors, things that you can't buy off the shelf and that have to be built under contract to a particular supplier. So the supplier, in response to a request for proposal, has to come up with an appropriate proposal documented in the appropriate way using the standard forms and so on. And this, historically, has been a very paper-intensive, labor-intensive process. So Salion saw an opportunity, or McKinsey saw an opportunity, to create a startup company to go after this market and provide some automation in the form of what they call the RAM platform, the Revenue Acquisition Management Platform. They regard it as a platform. It's really a suite of mix and match products that can provide a range of capabilities over these three main areas. And in particular, the two dealing with the Revenue Process Manager and the Knowledge Manager these are the ones that really help an organization not only create a proper response to the request for proposal, but also manage their organizational history with response to previous, or with respect to previous responses to this company or other companies. So the process manager part of the RAM platform, the suite of products, will help you create the response to the request for proposal. The knowledge manager will help you keep track of your organizational history so that you don't run into problems that you see here. These quotes come from Salion's marketing literature. So the second one in particular is an example of what can happen if you lose your corporate memory of how you responded to customers in previous responses to requests for proposal. And in this case, <laughs> They only asked for one year of retroactive rebates. Uh, the last one here is my favorite. Over half a million dollars in overnight shipping costs just to get the paperwork in on time. This is in addition to all the costs of actually creating the request for proposal and negotiating with the uh, automotive company that uh, put out the original request. In fact, the primary target for Salian right now is automotive companies. But in practice, any organization that puts out requests for proposals for products that are not off-the-shelf products is a target for an organization like uh, Salion. So the Salion software, the RAM platform, can be run either on your hardware if you're a customer, so they'll install it directly on your um, system on site, you can run it on Salion's dedicated hardware, so hardware dedicated specifically to you as a customer back at Salion HQ. Or in the last version, they can act like an application service provider and provide dedicated hardware for multiple, well, hardware dedicated to multiple different organizations simultaneously, presumably with the uh, appropriate confidentiality boundaries. So every customer that responds to a request for proposal will have its own way of coming up with the request for proposal and its own way of documenting it and its own way of setting up the user interface and the database management system and whatever it takes to generate an appropriate request for proposal. Every customer also has what they call bulk load requirements. This is your organizational history that allows the Salion software to make sure that you don't lose track of how you performed with, request, with respect to these kinds of bids in the past. And if your organizational history 
is documented on reams of paper in filing cabinets in the basement, it's very easy to lose track of your past performance. If it's in the form of a database, it's somewhat easier to manage and massage so that it can be processed by Salion software. The, um, there's an automotive industry group called the um, OAG, the Open Applications Group, that has defined a set of 120 standard objects in this world of revenue acquisition management that acts like a kind of, I would think of it as a domain-specific language. And Salion has been educating its customers in recasting their organizational history in terms of these transactions and objects so that it becomes easier to translate this into something that can be processed by the knowledge management portion of the RAM platform. But Salian's approach to product lines is, this is a wide open market. We are going after this to bring some automation to the market. We have to get a product out in the marketplace first. So we produce the RAM platform. They, they, they talk about it as if it were a product, but it's really a suite of products. But you get this RAM platform out into the marketplace first, and then you react to the market demands and you change it as necessary. So rather than spending a whole lot of time being very proactive about this domain that you're about to enter, you recognize and you know enough to be able to get a first product out the door, and then you will change and adapt and generate the rest of the product line once that standard, so-called standard product has been established in the marketplace. Needless to say, this is not an approach for the faint of heart, and you have to be pretty sure of your ability to do it and pretty sure that there is a market for this. And I think a lot of the expertise in that area came from the McKinsey Consultancy Company that is more familiar with this kind of operation. So they saw an opportunity. Here's a market that we can go after, and we can influence the direction this market is going to take. So we're going to have a lot of smart people from McKinsey behind this. We'll hire some smart people away from a web company that can provide a lot of expertise in the area of 24-7 availability for this kind of online rapid response approach. Salion did try to do some proactive anticipation about the kinds of configurability of elements that the RAM platform would require and concluded that it was basically a waste of time, that they were better off just getting the platform out there in the marketplace and then changing it as necessary in response to the market demand. So it's a reactive approach to product lines rather than a proactive. Actually, I don't think of it as a strictly reactive approach. I think a lot of the proactive knowledge was already there in the form of the expertise of the uh, McKinsey Consultancy Company. So in terms of the scope, Basically, any organization that is in the business of responding to requests for proposals from organizations like automotive companies or aircraft manufacturers, I imagine, would also be an organization similar to automotive companies in the sense that they would be subcontracting and putting out requests for proposal. Uh, any organization like that is fair game for this RAM platform. The understanding of relevant domains, a great deal of that came from the parent VC company, the McKinsey company. Process discipline and architecture definition. This is a small 21-person startup, so they can get by with a mix of processes and approaches. They use RUP as the overall process for architecture creation, coupled with an approach called VRAPs, vision, rhythm, anticipating, partnering, and simplification, which is an approach that I had never heard of before. It gets into the social 
organization of an architecture team in addition to things like functionality and quality attributes. Um, they use a combination of extreme programming and uh, what else did they use? I think 30-day uh, build as part of their overall uh, process. They used externally available software in areas that are not Thalion's core expertise. So the database management system, the user interface stuff, they would buy that, but the core expertise of the RAM platform is Thalion's internal expertise. Uh, in the area of tool support, they used a couple of interesting tools. One of them is called Gears. Gears is a tool from a company called BigLever.com. It's a company run by Charlie Kruger, who is a colleague of ours in the area of product lines. He is based in Austin, Texas, which is where Paul Clements is based, which is where Salion is based, which is how we got to hear about this in the first place. So the Gears tool helps you manage configurations and variations in a product line. The other tool that they used is something called Clone Doctor from a company called Semantic Designs. This is a tool that analyzes your code base looking for clones and potential clones and helps you keep the code base lean and mean. Market analysis and customer interface management, again, a lot of the expertise coming from the uh, McKinsey Consultancy Company. In terms of their operations, they did not regard themselves or at least use product line uh, terminology. And in fact, they, uh, I don't think there is a role, a single role of product line manager or product line champion. You basically had a team of talented people set up to go after a market where McKinsey saw some real business opportunities and their concept was we are going to get a product out the door first and then we will react to it as the marketplace demands. So measurement and tracking involved things like tracking cost and schedule. They also had measures in terms of a set of business use cases that they proposed early on and they tracked it in terms of business use cases created versus business use cases actually implemented. In terms of organizational structure, this is a small 21-person company, so well within the development department model of uh, Jan Bosch. No roles and responsibilities like a typical product line, and their whole approach to software development, and you can read this in the technical report, is called joyous software development. And the frequent technical interchange meetings that we see on other product line efforts, they call joyous love meetings. And this is Austin, Texas, not California. Keep Austin weird. Yes. I mean, seriously, there are bumper stickers all over the place that state that. But these are the kinds of results that they have been able to achieve from this kind of approach. As I said, it's not an approach for the faint of heart and certainly not an approach for everybody. But it is a different take on the concept of a product line. The RAM platform really is a product line, despite the fact that they refer to it as a RAM platform. And they will take that platform and install it on a customer site and customize it and work with the customer to ensure that it meets the needs of how that particular customer plans to respond to uh, requests for proposals. So this is a small, agile organization that saw a market opportunity and decided to go right after it. And you can read more about that in the Salion Technical Report. There are more details in particular about the, um, the software architecture.